So today I want to show you two fun techniques you can use to add some movement and wonkiness to your rhythms in the grid. I added also the techniques from this video to the document of tips and tricks I keep on updating. It's available on my Patreon together with the project files from this video and for many other videos. Now the first technique I want to show you is raising the resolution of a sequence, the clock resolution, and having more space between the notes, again for micro timing. So here I have a simple sequence, I have pitch coming from the steps module and I have gates or triggers coming from um, this sequence here, right, mixing a sign and the byte oscillator, right, a very simple sequence. And now if I want to add notes, for example, in between, right, the maximum resolution I have here is 16th note. We have 16 steps here, each one of them is a 16th note, right? So all I can do is just add more steps, but I cannot really add steps in between, and I can also not push or pull the steps a bit to the left or to the right. But what we can do to raise the resolution, it's really easy in the grid, all you have to do is add more steps. So we can use instead of uh, 16, let me stop this for a second, instead of 16 steps, we can go all the way up to 64, Maybe I will make this a bit bigger. Right, so now we have a resolution of 64th note, right? We have higher resolution. So first of all, what I will do, I will remove the steps we have here other than the first one, hit play. And now all I have to do is add again the notes that I had before. Right, but now you can see we have many more steps in between these notes. Right, we have more resolution. So now, first of all, I can push, for example, or pull um, the notes that we already have just to take them a bit off the grid. Right, so now they're a bit late. Now we get those uh, uh, glitches in pitch, but this is really easy to fix. All you need to do is use sample and hold that I have here. You put this in between the pitch source and the oscillators you're using. In this case, it will be here. And now, as long as it's not getting a trigger, the pitch will not change. So the pitch will change only together with an incoming trigger or gate that will come again from the same gate sequence. So now we don't get any more glitches in pitch and we have again the same resolution. Now the, these notes are a bit behind, right? They are a bit late. And of course we can add also more notes in between. Again, not exactly on the 16th note. We have a resolution of 64 now. So now we get something a bit more, a bit more wonky, a bit with more groove, a bit more interesting. Right, if we add more voices to this, um, you can see this also in context. I have here a kick. Right, you can hear the wonkiness of the sequence, uh, hi-hats and bass. I have here more hi-hats, and in this case what I'm doing, I'm using the repeats module or the repeats device actually in this case. So outside of the grid you can also do this because here I'm modulating the rate of the repeats, right, to get something again wonky. I can solo this for a second. Right, so again just to add more wonkiness to everything, and I have also some chords. Right, so again, we uh, create a higher resolution just by raising the number of steps and then we can add also notes in between and push and pull the notes that we already have. Let's look now at the second technique. In this case, I'm sequencing drums with the node grid. I'm using here the drum machine with four drums. 
Right, and here in the node grid, I have four different sequences, ones for a kick drum, a snare drum, a clap, and hi-hats, it will sound like this. Right now, for this technique, we will use the phase scalar module, which will look like this. With this module, we can scale the phase signal, making it slower or faster. So I will disable the internal phase of the sequences that I have here, right? Because we will use an external signal that will actually come from the scalar. So again, instead of the pre-code, instead of the internal phase, we will use the scalar. And now we need the original phase signal. So under IO, we have phase in, and this will go and will drive the scalar. Now by default, as you can see here, it's set to a ratio of two to one. I'm not so sure why, but it will play twice as fast. So all we need to do is take this to the ratio of one to one. And now by changing the rate, we can create this uh, drag and rush effects. Right, have a listen to this. Right, we can actually change the rate of the clock, of the phase. Now, something we can do, we can use, for example, the steps module, basically a sequence to um, create variation in the rate. Again, also here we will use the scaler, so I will disable the pre-code. The scaler will drive the sequence and eventually we will get a feedback loop because the scaler is driving the sequence and the sequence will in turn modulate the scalar. But first of all, let's make this maybe bipolar. So we have faster clock and also slower clock, maybe um, randomize this a few times. And now this we will use to modulate the rate. Right, so we get something a bit more wonky. Again, this is without, very straight, and now with, right, some uh, hits will be slower or will be a bit behind, some will be a bit too quick, right, and we get something a bit more wonky. Now, another thing we can do, since we're actually changing the tempo, basically, we can reset the scaler just to make sure that everything stays in sync, especially if you have also other voices running. So this we can do, for example, with the triggers module, just set this to one, so we have every bar a trigger, and this will trigger the reset of the scaler. Right, and now of course we can fine tune this. Right, something like this. Right, so we get something a bit wonky. Let's hear this again with other voices, just to have this in context. Here it's uh, with the bass, for example. And here I have an ARP, and I'm using the arpeggiator device to arpeggiate chords, but I'm sending this through a node grid. And also here, as you can see, I'm using the same technique with the scaler and again a steps modulator or a steps uh, sequencer to create more wonky rhythm. Maybe I will solo this for a second. Right, so even though we have a sequence and arpeggiate, uh, arpeggiation coming, we can still process it and create this uh, wonkiness. Right, let me show you this again without the modulation on the drums. Right, we get a straight rhythm, but then with. Right, we get something a bit more interesting here, just for fun, I have another line. And of 
course, there are many other ways for adding wonkiness to your sequences in the grid, for example, with more phase processors. Here I'm using the shift, the phase shift that will basically shift the steps left and right. Again, using the steps here to do this for me. So you can see these are the sequences they have, once for pitch, once for triggers, and you can see they are jumping back and forth, basically sorts of uh, creating sorts of glitches in the sequences. Right, this is uh, without. And now with. Right, we can also use another one. Let me unmute this. Another phase modulator. This is the bend, which will basically also create this uh, push and pull type of effect. Right, in this case, it's with the uh, noise, sorts of uh, wonky hi hats. So again, many ways of adding wonkiness to your rhythms. Again, um, consider joining us on Patreon and Discord. Thank you for watching. Cheers.